as a person troubleshooting it, I don't necessarily come down and have to know, you know, where to find it. It's cool that I do know where to, how to find it, but knowing what it does in the program is going to be make you more efficient. It's going to make the system more efficient. It's going to make you, um, as the person who can solve the problem, more efficient and more active. And All right, so why don't we use alias tagging? Uh, when it comes down to alias tagging and you know why you would actually implement that and use that is to make something more user friendly. It's to make something easier to read for the person behind you when it comes to troubleshooting, uh, when it comes to being more efficient at what you're doing, right? So let's just take, for instance, this, this line of code right here, right? So in this line of code right here, we're gonna talk about, I'm just gonna copy this and I'm going to paste it, control V, and I'm going to take this and make this this code right here real quick I'm gonna take this whole thing and I'm gonna change it so it's not alias so you can see the way this would actually work in a very simple easy side-by-side -side environment okay now obviously this is PowerFlex controls right here real simple to read to be honest with you um, so but when it comes up to not being able to, you know, alias it or look at the alias behind it or make a tag that's, it's more readable to understand, it's a little bit harder to, to understand. So why do I say that? All right, so side by side, let's look at this. This is the uh, state machine start command or start command for that, right? It's easy to read that and understand that. But if these weren't sitting side by side, if I, if I just showed you this one, you'd be like, well, I don't know what that is. And honestly, to be frankly honest with you, I wouldn't know what that is either. If it, either if I seen it, right? If I was coming behind somebody and actually seeing this code, just like it is, I wouldn't know what that is either. I would have to find it. Now, don't get me wrong; you can cross-reference it and troubleshoot it and find it, but that's more time-consuming. Takes more time for the person behind you trying to troubleshoot the code and troubleshoot the machine to get it back up and running. All right. So, let's just look at this one: PowerFlex Trainer. Right, so this is the this is a, a real world I/O that I, I just happen to name trainer underscore power of PF five twenty five. Now that name doesn't mean anything else to anybody else, right? It doesn't mean anything. It's just something I named it. So if I just simply had start underscore PF five twenty five, you would kind of you can understand that that's a start command for the PowerFlex five twenty five. Now for this though. You also don't have to be a you know a PowerFlex um, data expert, right? When it comes to reading the input-output word of that actual PowerFlex, you don't have to be an expert on that, right? So that's just one use case. Let me show you another one. So we're talking about making things more user-friendly. So let's talk about this this next one down here. And I, I know I'm just using this section of code. Now I have probably a hundred different uh, examples of this especially when it comes to state machine um, and using, let's just say, for instance, uh, structure text, even aliasing, aliasing and structure text to make things easier to read. Same exact thing, right? Except it's not real world, you know, IO. So I'm using this PowerFlex code for a reason. Now I'm gonna show you side by side again. This section of code, really simple to read. Let's control C and control V, paste that in there. I'm gonna get these two where you can see them side by side. Now I'm gonna change this code so that it actually represents no, using no alias code, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do this. It's really simple, real easy uh, to read the way it, it currently is up here. I'm gonna show you how confusing it gets down here. All right, so we got part of it done. <clears throat> We're gonna do this last little bit. And this active bit on the PowerFlex is, uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of heads up, this active bit on the PowerFlex, the PowerFlex has internal logic behind it on uh, each individual device, right? So the PowerFlex 525 um, drive is smart enough to know when it is active and not active. If it has a start command and it is um, the actual stator of that motor is giving a, a torque feedback, it's smart enough to know that it's active. So that's that active bit. 
and that's that's again some knowledge that you might not know but again when it comes down to it uh, that's why we use this active bit to understand is the drive actually active right is the drive actually being used right so you wouldn't have to know that if you were just coming behind that troubleshooting right you wouldn't have to be an expert in knowing this so if I just said this active bit just like this so let's look at these codes if that's the active powerflex underscore powerflex 525 you can easily kind of understand what that is if I said system speed control you can easily understand what that is if I said powerflex 525 speed command you can easily understand what that is right if I come down in next and said the speed command again you can easily understand what that is now if I come in here and just put the actual real-world IO for this instance it would be card 5 and the local rack right some of these systems gets really really huge and instead of local racks they have like remote racks and when it comes to remote racks that could get really big and you don't know where it's located at right so again when it comes down to it if I say local 5 right channel 5 and then our local 5 input channel 3 data okay so that's on that at, that's exactly on that card but if I said this is the speed command that tells you what it is and what it's doing but if I actually told you what it does in the program which is the speed control let me just turn this knob which is going to be the actual uh, speed command for that you can see that data changing so I don't necessarily have to as a person troubleshooting it, I don't necessarily come down and have to know, you know, where to find it. It's cool that I do know where to how to find it, but knowing what it does in the program is going to be make you more efficient. It's going to make the system more efficient. It's going to make you, um, as the person who can solve the problem, more efficient and more active, and actually have a better showing. Right? You're going to uh, us as, as human beings, we like we want to feel a, a sense of accomplishment. And when we figure out a problem like this, and we go down and fix it, you know, it's easy. It, we, we feel accomplished, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this real quick because it's now we've kind of done that example. But you see how different that is. And let's talk about some of these other ones. It gets kind of complex when you get to ignoring the fact of not using uh, alias tagging. So I just wanted to make a quick little video to show you alias tagging and what you would do to make you more efficient and why you would do it, right? So there's use cases on using alias tagging and everybody probably has different like when it comes to OEMs they have different reasons and why they use alias tagging and my personal uh, preference is to use alias tagging to make systems more efficient to make them user friendly to make the person that comes behind me it's easier to read it's easier for them to interpret the actual PLC code so that they can be more successful at what they're doing and the machines can be more efficient uh, when it comes down to this uh, that's the, my implementation every OEM and every person has their own implementation again I use them for state machines I use them for I showed you in a couple examples of uh, state machines uh, you know input output words right here coming talking with the actual uh, case example code right here this is the actual you know case example and then it says if then else but you understand these are alias as well so when it comes down to it it's making sure that you can be more user friendly right that's the whole implementation of using alias tagging and I want to make a video just to show and hopefully give you that understanding right that's my implementation there's probably again 10 or 20 different reasons why people would do that again it's all on the interpretation of the actual programmer so if you don't see something alias in your program and it just says local 5 whatever channel 3 it's probably gonna be harder for you to troubleshoot that what that is so hopefully that was a real uh, good perspective and a good understanding about why we would use alias tagging and that answered that question. Well, that said, we'll see you guys on the next one.